Good evening all and welcome to a late night story with CJ. Um, this is something new I'm going to try out. There's a bit of a like gap in the middle of the week so I'm going to move that over there so I don't spill it all over the new laptop. I've, always, I've been toying lately with the idea of doing some smaller videos midweek. This which uh, its aim is to uh, tell stories throughout my whole van life thing. Basically things that I didn't get enough footage to tell the story or random things that happened throughout my trip and throughout living in the van um, that never really got told before um, with the aid of whiskey. There's loads of little video ideas I've had lately and I've been toying with the idea of just doing midweek videos. So uh, I'm going to try it out. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, well, you will definitely let me know. So the first late night tale I have for you guys is uh, one of Lance. I thought you'd all like that one. Yeah, in this one he nearly died. So let me cast you back to the, the setting at hand. Uh, I just picked up uh, my friend Steve. Some of you might have seen the video where I picked Steve up and Steve is just an entity within himself. You can't not like him. Um, just picked him up from Milan and the first mission of our, our tour was to do what I had been doing a lot of the trip, which is getting out into the wilderness and just finding an amazing spot with a cracking view and just being. That's what we wanted, two days of just chilling out. So we headed for the hills, got up towards the Alps and just started climbing and these roads were just incredible. You were weaving up and up and up and the van started overheating but you know, we ignored that. And eventually we found this little alcove. Um, didn't look like much from the road, it just kind of, you had to look back on it so we ended up just reversing in. And um, as we got into it, oh my god, the view from this spot was incredible. Um, you had like a just a small opening of trees, and as you looked out beyond, you just saw another valley, a huge lake, a little town that just kind of ribboned across the the bank of the lake. And what it essentially was was we were on a, like a bit of a plateau, and then it was about a. Oh, I don't know, 500 foot drop. It was we were high up, and um, it didn't look like it on the footage. It just looked like it kind of faded down. But where we were, it just kind of went like this, and then down. We'd mission accomplished. Basically, we'd we'd found the spot. Um, directly behind the back door of the van was a, an amazing walk. Um, <laughs> we'll get onto that one in a bit. And I say set up camp because Steve had made me drive him to Decathlon, so that he could buy a tent because he wanted to sleep on the roof. Just a standard day with Steve. <laughs> so yeah, we got set up, got Steve's tent on the roof, and um, cracked open the beers. Had a great, great time. Then decided to go and have a little bit of a look around the the area to kind of get our bearings. We could hear water, so we knew there was some sort of stream, river, waterfall, something nearby. Found it. It was lovely. Hell of a long walk back though, mostly uphill. So by the time we sort of got back to the vicinity of the van, we were pretty knackered and we decided to have a bit of a sit down. But this whole path kind of ran along this plateau that I was on about and it kind of went like this. You had the path, went like this again, and then the sheer drop. So the entire time I was kind of wary of Lance and I don't like to put him on the lead when I don't have to. You know, he has his free roam. That's the whole point of being a van dog until this point. <laughs> But he's a springer, you know, he's, he's good on his feet, he's agile, he's supposed to be able to handle weird terrain. So he was just barreling up and down and around and all over the place. But every time he got near that edge, it just set me off. I got vertigo for him. And it was at this point when Lance dropped the biggest clangor possibly of his life. Up until that point, actually, he's done a lot more stupid shit since then. But anyway, yeah, Lance sat down and then as he tried to like lie down, he just went over off the edge down this kind of plateau if that's i don't know if that's that the right word plateau the flick of landscape i don't know an area of fairly level high ground i was right plateau hey <coughs> so lance started falling and i spotted it went to grab him and missed and all i could see was my dog gamboling over and over, he picked up some pretty tremendous speed actually, towards uh, a point. So split second reaction, I kick in, lift my legs up and go bouncing on my ass basically after him. And it's at this point I think, oh my god, oh I've really fucked up here because I'm now bowling towards the edge of the cliff as well as the dog. But with my weight advantage I started gaining a bit of traction on him. So it was like, right, I need to hook the dog 
and stop ourselves within milliseconds of each other or we're going to die. Not again. It isn't real how often I have to stop and wait for this. Try some of this instead. Come here. We're talking about you. Have a good drink, buddy. We're talking about you. That time you nearly killed us both. Yeah. My little personal asshole, ain't you? Where was I? And um, hook him with the right leg. And then with my left leg, I just sort of put it out there and hoped for the best. And luckily there was a bit of a rocky mound. So we'd come to quite a significant stop. This, this drop was like this, kind of come like this. And then it was the edge. And I opened my eyes to the elation of the fact that we hadn't gone over the edge, but also bared witness to my brand new three hour old flip-flops. One of them from the left foot, pinging off the edge. As Steve had gone to get all his tent equipment, I'd gone in and got myself a nice pair of flip-flops. I was well happy with them. Had them for three hours. This event happens. One of them fucks off over the edge. Just... We were further down towards the edge than we were at the, the path. So what do we do? Then, like a voice from the gods, I heard Steve shout, are you all right? Remembered he was with us. Bearing in mind, I'd been on my own for like, uh, at this point, four months. So I'd forgot that Steve was with us at this point and it was just on the edge of this thing, sheer panic, oh my God, what the fuck am I gonna do? But yeah, Steve was with us. Um, he managed to get himself like a human chain down this tree and hand us a branch and pull us and lift the dog back up and, and we got back up. So all saved, all good, nobody died, thank God. Then reality started to kick in on what had actually just happened. You know, at this point I was just running on pure adrenaline. I had to go and have a good 10 minutes, sit down with myself and just contemplate life. <laughs> just all your bastard, it hit home. So I have my 10 minutes sit down. I reevaluate a few things in life and become a slightly little bit more spiritual. Uh, Lance is just on the hunt for a tennis ball. And as we got back to the van, he finds his tennis ball. He'd left it right next to the van. And uh, bearing in mind, this hill that we'd just shot down, as we got to the van, it sort of bowed away a little bit, but it was the same hill. It still went down and it still went to the cliff and it was still a perilously deadly drop. I don't know what went through Steve's head, uh, but Lance hands Steve the tennis ball. He's all excited. He wants to play still. I'm still a little bit like, oh, and I've got loads of sharp seeds stuck in my foot because I've got one bastard flip flop. Steve, I guess, is in that same mode and just is not thinking because he grabs the tennis ball and just launches it towards the cliff. Lance holds off towards the cliff. Me and Steve have a second or two of just looking at each other like no words were spoken, but you could see. I was like, what the fuck have you just done? Steve's like, I don't know. Then just pegs off down the hill after him, almost gamboling off because it's... And there's a good, I don't know, it must have only been a minute, but it felt like 10, uh, of thinking, right, so I've just saved my dog, risked my own life, now my dog is probably dead again and he's took my best mate with him in a foreign country. It's still there, it's still burnt into my memory. It's possibly the worst day of my life. <laughs> the day I picked Steve up is like my omen. But no, they emerge from the trees and all is well. Steve is like a deep colour of maroon. Lance, still fine, oblivious to the fact. Uh, they go back up and we crack out the drinks. Yeah, we had a, we had a good, good drink that night. It was needed. Um, a bit of this actually. So yeah, that was the day in Italy that I nearly died and Lance nearly died twice. He couldn't write it. But that's the beauty of it. I have many more of these kinds of stories because when you live life on the road, weird shit happens all the time. And a lot of it, I never managed to get on camera. 
So I really hope you enjoyed this guys and if you did let me know in the comments what you thought, anything you might want to see in the future. If you did enjoy it make sure to hit the like button because these days more than ever that it seems to be the only way a channel gets exposure and considering I'm trying to make this my job now I could kind of do with the exposure. <laughs> if you're new to the channel at the weekends I do like travel vlog kind of videos and they'll be getting a lot better soon trust me because I've got plans in the works. And then this is something new. I'm going to try and do these these midweek things. So it'll be like late night stories like this, um, FAQs, my thoughts, tips, tricks, God knows what about van life. And um, they will all probably be going down with a little bit of whiskey. If you've watched a live, you know how they go. <laughs> but yeah, until then, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.